Thanks so much for joining me today. We're in one of our bowstring making slash leather shop areas. Now, Shadowproof Archery has run out of garages, basements, and spare bedrooms right now. And it's a special, really cool time to be able to do this. We will probably grow out of these spaces soon, but I'm gonna treasure this time we have. I'm gonna show you how to make our shell cordovan tabs today, as well as our chrome tan leather tabs today. This is exactly how we make the products. They've evolved over time. We've done a few different things to make them better and more comfortable. These tabs are made to be trimmed so that they're oversized so that you can trim them to the exact size of your hand. So let's jump right into it and start off talking about leather. So first we've got our chrome tan leather. This leather makes up the entirety of the chrome tan tab. All three pieces of the leather are the same. Next we've got this little accent piece. This piece of leather is more looks than functionality. This right here is our shell cordovan. This is the functionality of the shell cordovan tab and what makes them more pricey. And finally, we've got suede, a really soft leather to go on the back of the shell cordovan tabs. It feels really good paired with it. The cost of leather varies quite a bit. So this chrome tan leather right here, this whole side cost about $125 to $130. Now, this piece of shell cordovan cost about $330. So this is actually the rump of a horse is where this one comes from. This other leather is from a cow. And the two different kinds of leather serve two different purposes. The shell cordovan is such a slick, nice leather. And if you like to not feel the string, this sort of tab is going to be for you. Now what I mean by not feel the string is a lot of people who shoot with archery gloves say they like to feel that string more. But if you want to feel the string less and feel like it's distance from your hand. A lot of people like that because they believe they can get a smoother release. Shell cordovan is for you. Yet, if you like the feel of a glove but want to try out a tab, chrome tan's for you. You're gonna be able to feel it more. The leather's more supple. It's gonna mold around that string a lot more and you'll feel the string in the groove of your hands a lot more than with shell cordovan. The two tabs are almost identical to make. There are a few slight variations at the end to finish them, but they're the same size, almost identical. The main difference is the cost of the leather is much different and that's why the shell cordovan one costs more. The first thing to do is cut out our pieces. So we'll grab all of our dies for the tabs. And today we're gonna make two of each. So let's go ahead and stamp out our cordovan. Now we'll make a two right-handed split finger cordovan tabs. So we'll go ahead and stamp these out as well. That should be good on the cordovan. Now for the chrome tan, we'll stamp out all the pieces we need for those tabs. We'll go two split and two right as well. So since it's the same on each one, we'll need four of these to make two tabs. Now we'll grab the tabs for the split. Now we just need four of these pieces and we'll have the, the cutouts we need. It's time to cut out the back pieces of the shell cordovan tabs. So 
We'll need two for three under. We'll need two for the back of the right-handed splits. And we'll need four of these slick top pieces. This just really cleans up and finishes off the shell quarter and tabs. Makes them look real good. This piece of leather is less functionality because of its location, but it kind of just holds everything together. Makes it look real clean once the stitching's in there. The order of operation is really important when trying to produce things in speed. So normally I'll batch 25 of these or 50 of them. But if you get the order of operations wrong, then it's going to take a lot longer because you're going to wait for glue to dry or you're going to wait for stain or edge paint or edge coat to dry. So we're going to go ahead right now and put on some edge coat just on this one side of the chrome tan tabs. This is just a brown edge coat. It makes it look nice and clean. Doing this now will allow this to be dry by the time we need these pieces again. That's it for the brown edge coat. And then on the shell cordovan ones, we're just gonna use some black stain. One of the super nice things about leather is it's naturally weather resistant or some would say waterproof. It's really nice to have products out of leather because they just tend to last really well. Now if you leave them in water or get them wet and just leave it like that for a long time, they will shrivel or shrink a little bit maybe. So you would want to be careful with that. But if they get wet and then you wipe it off, you're all good. Okay, let all those dry. As all of these front little pieces dry, we're gonna take the main pieces of the tab and start gluing these together. When using glue, there's a couple purposes for it. One purpose is to actually hold the item together. The second purpose is to hold it together for stitching, but the stitching's gonna hold the actual product together. And pretty much every product we make, the stitching's what primarily holds it together. And we just spread a little glue on there. It'll help it a little bit, but really for how good sewing machines are and the stitchings are, the stitchings will hold it together, except near the edges. The edges of our tabs stay together because we use glue. A lot of other tabs don't use glue. Saves time, saves a step, right? But the edges will start peeling apart. It doesn't look very nice. And then dirt can get in there and it just wears the tab down faster. So I prefer to use glue. Since these are stamped out, it's super nice to not have to trim them. That is, if you take the time to make these edges perfectly line up together. When gluing, you want to leave the flap there. That helps with the trimming later on. You don't want one solid piece of leather for a tab. It tends to not be as comfortable when you shoot. So we're using two, two to three ounce pieces of leather that are gonna be two flaps and that'll allow you to trim them to your size. Cause when you bend the tab over, the back of the tab is shorter than the front. So you'll wanna trim that to true it up and even it and then trim it to the size of your hand. And that's when you start really shooting well with the tab. It's when it's fit custom to you. Got those done. Moving on to the three under tabs. If you're using contact cement or something like that, you'll want glue to get tacky first, but we're using um, a white glue. It, it's called Eco-Friendly Leather Weld. It tends to work really well and it speeds up the process and there is no odor because if I were to use contact cement down here, I would need more ventilation. So right here, we've got a heat press that we're gonna turn on and we're gonna use our templates to stamp in shatterproof into the back of these cordovan tabs. As this gets hot, we need it to get to 250 degrees. Um, we've made a couple changes to the tabs. One of them is we now use an elastic polypropylene bungee shock cord for the finger loop. We used to use slits of leather and we tried out paracord and let people customize it. But comfort, I think, is the most important thing. And so that's why we went to the bungee shock cord. This allows you to just set it wherever you feel is best on your hand. And then when you put it on, you can just stretch it out, 
put your finger through it and let it in and you're tight. That way you're not having to do this and then it's real awkward to try to pull that down while it's on your finger. You can get it set to the size you need, stretch it out, put it on, and then it molds to your hand much, much better. So this bungee shot cord is something we started doing recently and it works much better than the old way we used to do it. And then of course, if you want, you can always trim the tag ends to the perfect length or you could even tie this off in a knot and then trim it and then you never can adjust it, which is fine if you're the only one shooting it and you like it that way. Okay, so we're all set to stamp. Again, this is another one of those that goes much faster when you're batching, but I have a couple markers and a couple lines lined up. So we just have to line it up with our lines, push it, push it against our blocks on the back so it's a true stop. And then with this one, you just hold down for one second have a really nice stamped and burned in shatterproof. I like to just subtly put that on the back of the tabs. Now that our heat stamps are done, we can go ahead and finish gluing up these pieces. One of the most important things is to make sure these edges are perfectly fitting and true together. It saves a lot of time in the future so that you don't have to spend time trimming off uneven edges. Additionally, makes sewing so much easier. There are the three under ones moving on to the splits. Okay, now at this point, all of our pieces should be dry, which they are. So we can glue all of these on very simply. Now, since our glue is to hold it temporarily so we can sew. There's no need to scratch up the back of this. Um, you could, you could use one of these tools right here and just scratch up the back of it. But from my experience and my testing, it's not necessary on this product when it hurt it at all. But the main time you wanna scratch up the back of it is when you want your glue to hold and you may not be using stitching. But this glue is temporary to hold it in place, kind of like you would use CA glue and woodworking to hold something in place temporarily in order to get the fasteners in. At this point on the split finger tabs, I can make it a right-handed tab, or you can just turn it around and make it a left. Either way. Everything I'm doing here today can be done with 10 or 15, 20 dollars of leather hand tools. Um, I just have a few more tools for production to save time, but you could make up your own shape, cut it out with a little X-Acto knife, get the glue, put it together, and then hand stitch it in your lap, and you'd have no problem with that. This glue dries in about 15 minutes, so it goes pretty fast, um, and you actually can sew before it is dried. Generally, just due to batching, they are, <laughs> they sit for a little while before I sew them. So they're normally completely dry. One of the annoying things about the suede, it will get some dust on it, but we'll clean that off late, later, uh, make it look pretty before we send it out. All right, and there is the last one making sure they're all true. Now, with our stack of tabs, we can head on over to the sewing machine and uh, get these sewed up. So I was just talking about batching things and this is what it'll normally look like. I'll have a couple stacks here and then sew all these up. So sewing's eh, pretty easy actually. Once you get used to it and practice quite a bit, there's a few tricks to it, but once you practice, you can get fairly fast. The annoying thing is that if you try to go too fast, you'll ruin a few products and you never really want to have to trash things, although it does happen. Make sure we're lined up, finish off with a little bit of a back stitch, pull this out and trim the tag ends. And then as always, we'll burn the tag ends. And so there it is. Now you can do this 
probably take you five, 10 minutes, saddle stitch it, and uh, it'll look good, and you'll be good to go by doing hand stitching. On some products, I'll use this guide to make sure it's straight, like the Ultimate Arm Guards, that's really important. But since this is such a small product and the lines are straight, you can still use it. Um, it tends to slow me down a little bit. And I like to <laughs> try to go as fast as I can with still making it really good. Um, so what I'll do is I'll set a timer a lot of times and try to do one completely every minute. Um, but you can lift it up, set it down on top of the leather and you still get a guide on top, which is super nice on the Ultimate Arm Guards. That stitch didn't catch, so we'll just go backwards and we're good to go. That one didn't catch again. You can hear it click. There we go. We're good there. One more. There you have it. So we're getting so close to getting these finished. Now we just need to finish up the edges. I'm gonna split these quarter vins away from these chrome tans and we'll bring the edge paint out again. Brown edge paint for the chrome tan. Now this die roller is really nice. Uh, you can't be super precise with it. So lots of times I'll finish up these sides right here with the hand roller. And the reason we don't continue all the way down is because you're going to trim it. And this is just a finishing touch to make it look nice. There is no necessarily functionality, waterproofing, anything like that. The leather's good enough in itself, but this will make it look a little better. Roll it on the edge paint and just examine it. Make sure you hit all the dry spots. Now this tab right here is not lined up perfectly. We've got a little bit of the edge there that's not lined up. So I will true that up. And that's where I was talking about earlier. It's really important to take your time lining it up because it should line up perfectly if you are using cookie cutter dies like I am. But it's user error when it doesn't line up perfectly, which isn't a big deal. Just when you're batching them, it takes an extra second to make sure that they're true when you have to cut them. Spending an extra minute on one of these when you're making 100 of them definitely cuts into time. That could be used better. Okay, so that is it with the edge paint. On these other ones, we're gonna use the dye again, and then we're gonna burnish it with some beeswax in a minute. So this die really is just to get the shell cordovan darker so that it blends in on the back with the other two black leathers. This is real simple to apply, real fast, and we'll end up looking really good once it dries. As the edge paint and the die dries, Go ahead and prep the packaging. I'll just, just a little branding here, put some shatterproof archery stickers on, and then we'll cut out the polypropylene bungee shot cord next and get our cord locks ready. Okay, those are good to go. Our bungee shot cord, go ahead and pull down. We cut this at six inches. So we'll need seven of them, six, 12, 18, there's three. Six, 12, 18, there's three more, and then just one more. And I can ravel this back up. Okay, let's check the edges here. We are getting real close. 
real, real close. Okay. Got our cord locks. And so now we're good to package it. We'll just need our templates to cut the holes with a scratch all and a hole punch. So how this templates work is quite simple. Just lay it on top of the tab, cut it out. And now you can see exactly where we need to cut it out. I have the hole marked on the hole punch. So you can just clip right through it. Now there are some terrible hole punches on the market, but if you can get a good one, it works well. From there, you run your shock cord through, put your cord lock on. If there's any fuzzies, burn them off. And then always final examine to make sure all the stitchings, it didn't skip a stitch. There's no thread, logo, everything's on there and good to go. At that point, grab one of your little Ziplocs and put in the tab. Seal it, and that is good to go to a customer. Now, as far as the Cordovan tabs, we've got one more step. This is an electric burnisher. Turn it on, it's just gonna spin real fast. We'll add some beeswax, allow it to heat up, and this is just gonna seal that die in and make it look real good. Burnishing takes the three pieces of leather and makes them look like one. The beeswax seals the edge and nothing, nothing will get through that. Okay, just a few more seconds here and we are good on the burnish. There the edge burnish is and you can't really tell a difference between the three pieces of leather. The glue will help hold it together. The beeswax, the finish, it's gonna hold really nice and look really good. From here, I'll finish out this tab the same way I would the other ones. So grab our scratch all, use our template, mark the holes. Now it looks like we got a little extra glue or stain on this one. That's where you examine it and clean it up to just make it look as good as possible. Another thing you might see is a little uh, little tag into the thread coming undone. Now that's not all the thread coming undone, that just means I didn't burn it good enough earlier. Uh, with the back stitch, that thread is going nowhere. So we'll burn that off, make sure it looks good. If there's little fuzzies on the back, you can burn it and it looks real good on the suede. Toss our shock cord and our cord lock. Make sure there's no fuzzies just to make it look good, no other reason. There we go, Ziploc bag. Don't pull them apart, you'll break it. But if you go sideways, pro tip right there. Slide them in. Seal the Ziploc. There you go. Then finally, you can grab all of these go over to the inventory. And I needed to make some more quarter bins right here. Um, we've got three under on the left, splits here, split left, and there you go. They're ready for you guys. I think part of my motivation to make this video or probably a couple more like this is so that I can look back in three, five, 10 years and just be like, wow, look at where it started. And it's you guys that have supported me on this archery business we've been able to start. This is the, the birthing center of, this kind of sounds weird. Yeah, I had a kid recently, but this is the, <laughs> the birthplace of Shatterproof Archery. This is where we make the strings. This is where we make the leather just in the basement. I'm excited to move into a shop, but 
I can find myself wanting that so much that I forget to just enjoy the beginnings. So thank you for supporting me. Thank you for allowing me to do this. That's how we make the tabs. Thanks so much for your support. Really, thanks for watching this. Uh, means a lot to me. And if you like this video, let me know. If you want me to show you how we make arm guards or quivers, anything else like that, hit me up, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys on the next video.